In the following Sequoia video, we'll mesh and export a dataset using Hacksaw. Let's create a point loader and pick the Crime House dataset. This dataset is offset from the world origin along the z-axis. So uh, instead of moving it down to the home grid, we're going to use a user coordinate system. Let's create a measure and assign a UCS, even though the precision status is OK and it's not required for precision purposes. Then we can lock the object properties panel and switch to the user coordinate system in order to move it. Let's switch to front view and adjust its position so it's at the bottom of the dataset. Now we can insert the point region of interest between the point loader and the measure and we can uh, set the radius for the meshing to 1 cm or 10 mm and we'll be reducing heavily to only 1%. In the Hacksaw uh, panel we can set the X cells to 6, the Y to 5 and we'll set the Z cells to 3 because we have three stories the basement, the first floor and the second floor. If we show the cells we can see where they're passing through the data set and we can adjust the point region of interest the bottom and the top. When we update the cells we can now see that the splits are passing between the three floors. We can export to UCS space. We'll use the default file name and we'll be exporting a texture so we'll enable the baking and we'll set the texture size to 2k otherwise we'll use the default settings. Now that the export started we can move the task manager to the site in order to see all the tasks in detail. The first task is loading the point loader and the other seven are sitting and waiting for it to finish in order to reuse its cache because it makes no sense for eight tasks to load the same data at the same time. We can switch to the configuration dialog and search for tasks and we'll see that we have various entries that are currently set to eight parallel tasks and the hacks are set to zero that means use any number of available tasks. So once our first task uh, has finished right now it's using only about 30 percent of the CPU, then the CPU will go to 100 percent because all the other tasks will start reusing the already cached point data. Then they will run for a while and will mesh the data within their uh, cell regions and then they will optimize the data and bake a texture to disk. We'll uh, let this run for a while and then switch to 3ds Max to take a look at some of the results. Here we are in 3ds Max. We'll use the Sequoia Hacksaw Importer, which is a Max script that is provided with Sequoia. And we'll pick one of the currently created 43 um, cells from the Hacksaw processing, but we can also load the subset using the materials and textures and self-illuminated textures. We'll load only from 1 to 30, which is the basement, because we have 6 times 5 subdivisions in each of the floors. This creates 30 X-Mesh loaders, and each X-Mesh loader gets a material with a texture assigned to the diffuse slot and self-illumination set to 100%. Now we have the basement loaded and uh, by default the viewport is using 1K textures. We can switch to half that resolution or to 2K which is the actual texture size that we selected which gives us much uh, higher precision. If we take a look at the wireframe, it's actually very highly optimized, so most of the detail is coming from the textures. We have the ability to see the vertex colors, and this of course gives us a very blurry color, because uh, there are not enough vertices there. But when we switch to textures, uh, we can see a lot more detail.
these buttons in the script apply to all the selected objects. So if we want to affect only a single object, we can select it and then apply, for example, only vertex color display to it. If we want to switch back to textures, we just click back on the respective button. There are 14 more cells from the second floor that have already been created. And uh, we can let the script load them. And if we deselect the previously selected piece, it will automatically start selecting the new pieces that are coming in. Once it's done, it will zoom on the uh, selection. So we have about half of uh, the data already created. Out of 90, we have 48 created. We can wait for the rest to finish. Here we see Sequoia has already finished the processing. And we can switch back to 3ds Max. We can update the file name from the current selection. And we see that there are 42 more XMesh loaders to be created. So just populate the missing pieces, which includes portions of the first floor and the whole second floor. At this point, we have the complete meshed data set. Each of the 90 cells has a 2K texture, and we have about 1 million polygons after optimizing significantly. However, a lot of the resolution is stored at the edges of the cells, where the resolution has to be kept at full. We can select all the nodes, and we can switch to vertex colors or back to textures. This data set could be rendered in a production renderer or exported.